The purpose of this video is to provide a general instruction in the setup and operation of Sturtlecone E-Bright Wireless Mobile Column Vehicle Lifts. This operations video is supplementary to full operation training as detailed in the original equipment installation, operation, and service manual. The original manual is also supported by the following documents that are provided by the Automotive Lift Institute. The Automotive Lift Safety Tips placard attached to the lift and the operator's portion of the Automotive Lift Operation Inspection and Maintenance Manual. Only operate the lift when compliance with these standards has been met. Please note, this video is not a substitute for formal operator training as outlined in ALI standard. As a starting point, always place and operate mobile column vehicle lifts on a flat, firm surface in compliance with the requirements laid out in the original equipment manual. If the lifts are to be operated outside, it is necessary for the operator to be aware of wind loads against the vehicle when in a raised position. Maximum allowable wind loads are detailed in the original equipment manual. Now let's get started. The first step to utilizing mobile column vehicle lifts is to get the column to the service area. The column includes in its design a pallet jack mechanism to facilitate this relocation. The pallet jack has a three position handle. Here, we see the pallet jack handle placed into the lowest position and the pallet jack handle being pumped up, which in turn raises the column off the floor. One, the raised handle position is for release of the pallet jack. Two, the middle handle position is the neutral position that allows relocation of the column. And three, the lowest position of the pallet jack handle is to allow the column to be raised off the floor for relocation. Now that the column is raised off the floor, it is simply a matter of maneuvering the column to the location of the vehicle. As a starting point, the operator must ensure that the lifting forks matches the diameter of the tire being lifted. The mobile column vehicle lift is fitted with adjustable lifting forks. The principle behind adjusting the forks is to gauge the correct diameter of the tire to prevent the unlikely event of a tire rupture. Adjustable lifting forks allow you to position the forks manually by releasing the fork lock and adjusting the fork according to each side equally. Once the fork is properly positioned, it will fit precisely in the middle of the tire. Ensure the lifting fork is aligned and completely in contact with the tire. It is best that the steering axle tires are straight when the vehicle is brought into the service bay. Once the column is positioned firmly to the tire, release the pallet jack by raising the handle to the upper position. This will lower the column to the floor. Repeat these steps with all columns in the set. Now that all the columns in the set are properly positioned, the columns within the set can be powered up. Each column has a main power switch. Locate the main power switch and rotate it clockwise from off to on. Once the auto-diagnostic check has been completed, the column is ready for the setup and initialed for operation. It is important to follow this procedure in exactly the same way for each powered-up column in the set. Once a column is powered up and the self-diagnostic has been completed, the on-screen display will prompt the operator to identify or initialize the columns that are to be linked into a single set that will operate together. Now that all columns are powered up and ready to be identified, simply go to each column and place the ID key in front of the wireless symbol. The column will acknowledge that it has been identified by emitting a single beep and prompt the operator to move to the next column to be identified or use the ID key to finish column grouping and the startup process. Each column in the set needs to be identified so that the columns can all be linked into a set. Once all the columns have been identified, it's time to initiate grouping the identified columns. To group the columns, go to any single identified column and place the identifier next to the wireless symbol for a second time. The control system on that column will emit two beeps, meaning that the grouping procedure will begin. There will be a slight delay as the control system groups all identified columns into an operational set after the columns have been grouped into an operational set, the column that emitted the double beep will display the number of columns grouped into the set. The operator will need to confirm by pressing the button with the check mark on the control system, 
confirming that the number of columns grouped matches those identified. It is the operator's responsibility to ensure that all the number of columns in the set matches the number displayed on the screen. With Sturtle Coney wireless mobile column vehicle lifts, the operation of the columns is conveniently available from any control box within the set. From any control box, you can operate the set in single mode, pair mode, and the entire set of columns. To raise the entire set, you simply press the button with the arrow pointing upwards on any control box. It is important to make sure that the indicator lamp is lit up for all operation. At a height of approximately 12 inches or 30 centimeters above the floor, it is required that the operator stops lifting by releasing the button and does a visual inspection. To do this, walk around the perimeter of the vehicle to ensure that the lifting situation is stable and safe. All of the columns in the set will raise as long as the up button is kept pressed. All of the columns in the set are fitted with a height measuring device. The group of columns will lift until the maximum height is reached. It is possible at any height to lower the vehicle into the mechanical locks. The control system also includes a function that allows the operator to increase the lifting speed or to reduce the lowering speed of the columns in the set. This increased or reduced operating speed affects all columns in the group, paired columns or single operation. On the on-screen display is a speed icon denoted with a percentage. To initiate quick lifting or slow lowering, press this icon and you can adjust the speed with increments of 10%. In many instances, it may be necessary to raise or lower an individual tire. This operation is available from any control box within the set. The operator simply needs to go to one column and press the select icon on the on-screen display until the single button is illuminated for single. To activate the single operation mode, press the single column icon then a screen will pop up indicating that you have to press the check button. Once you've pressed the check button, then you are in the single operation mode, and this is indicated by the single column icon turning green. And then to activate lifting, press the arrow pointing up button. To exit single operation mode, press the all icon. A screen will pop up indicating that you have to press the check button. This is indicated by the All icon turning green. In many instances, it may be necessary to raise or lower an individual axle or the entire end of a vehicle. To accomplish this task, it is possible to group two columns in the set into a pair. It is very important that the columns on a designated paired set are on the same axle and not the columns on alternate axles. At any time while the control system is operational, it is possible to create pairs of columns. This operation is available from any of the columns you want to pair. To activate the paired operation mode, press the paired column icon. A screen pops up indicating that you have to press the check button. Then physically walk to the column you want to have in the paired selection and a screen pops up indicating that you have to press the check button. Now you are in paired operation, and this is indicated by the paired column icon turning green. The operator must continue to designate pairs until only two columns, the last pair, remain. So, in a set of four, the operator must designate at least two columns as a pair, and the remaining two will default into a pair. In a set of six, the operator must designate at least two pairs, and the remaining pair will default into a pair. 
paired operation will not be available until all but the last two columns in any set have been designated as a pair. With any operation, when the columns of the group are not selected, an acoustic alarm will sound when the columns are either raising or lowering. When the group columns are in single or paired mode, an acoustic warning signal will sound. For more information, see the manual. Make sure you always go back to All Mode after paired operation by pressing the All icon on the screen display. To initiate lowering, the operator depresses the button with the arrow pointing down. The columns will all lower into a mechanically locked position on the first available position on the locking ladder. If the operator does not wish to lower the columns into the locks, but to lower the vehicle to some height below the first available locking position, the first action must be to retract the mechanical locks. To retract the locks, the operator needs to depress the button with the horizontal arrow. As long as the lock release button is depressed, the locks are retracted. To begin lowering, the operator depresses the lowering button. The operator can release the lock release button and the locks will remain retracted. With the lowering button depressed and the locks released, the columns in the set will lower completely to the floor. Now that we have finished with lifting and lowering, it's necessary to remove the columns from the vehicle. First action is to lower the vehicle to the floor, utilizing the lock release and the lowering button as detailed previously. Once all columns are lowered completely and the tires are on the floor, the operator must elevate the column using the pallet jack. It should be noted that once the pallet jack is extended, the communication circuit between the columns is disconnected and a full restart must be initiated if the operator wants to relift the columns. A message pops up on the on-screen display indicating that the column is on the wheels. Once the column has been stowed away, recharging can be done as necessary. Every Sturtle Coney wireless mobile column vehicle lift is fitted with a built-in automatic battery charger with a removable cord. To recharge the column, plug the cord into the socket on the front of the cabinet and into a standard 110 or 220 volt wall socket, depending on your region. The charger will recharge the batteries as needed. The amount and frequency of battery recharging will be dependent on usage. Many thanks for your attention and for choosing the Sturtle County Wireless Mobile Column Vehicle Lifts. Have a great and safe day.